Greetings, greetings, good afternoon, free the land, how y'all doing? This is Root Work on Black Power Media. How's everybody doing? Those of y'all like Ngonia Ma who are already here. My name is Tonda Cizue Shimmeringa. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please like, share, and subscribe. Like this video now before you forget. Share the link to the video and subscribe to Black Power Media. Subscribe to Black Power Media. Join Black Power Media. Support Black Power Media. And while you're doing that, look for the Root Work channel, my own personal YouTube channel, and subscribe over there. Subscribe to Root Work. Subscribe to Root Work. Subscribe to Root Work. Please, please, please help a sister out, all right? Help a sister get her own numbers up. You know what I'm saying? as we are in support with others, Black Power Media. So today we are going to be speaking with, we are definitely going to be speaking with Brother Kali Akuno. Um, my understanding is that Kamau Franklin, co-founder of Black Power Media, is threatening to join us. We'll see if he makes good on that threat. But Brother Kali Akuno, uh, co-founder of Cooperation Jackson, longtime activist, in the New African Independence Movement and in other struggles, a theorist and author, organizer, husband, father, he will definitely be with us as we talk about this latest HBO documentary, The Devil We Know. Well, actually, it's called South to Black Power, and it's based on Charles Blow's book, The Devil We Know. So hold on for me one second. Yes. Yes, I see, brother. Brother, brother, Kali is here with us. <laughs> I got 600, really? No, I don't have 600 likes already. Don't, don't, don't get my head all big like that. Don't, don't do all that. Hey, y'all, how you doing? How's everybody? How's everybody? Come on in, come on in. Let's get it started. So, yeah, so this is our, our, my, a conversation as well as analysis, but uh, we want to have a conversation regarding this the HBO documentary, South to Black Power, based on Charles Blow's book, The Devil We Know. Again, we're going to have Kali Akuno on with us, who's here now waiting in the wings. And we're going to have, we're threatening to have Kamal Franklin. We'll see what happens. But uh, again, like, share, subscribe this video. Subscribe to Black Power Media, and also subscribe to Root Work, which is also on YouTube, my own personal channel. So I'm going to bring in Brother Kali Akuno. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing oh, good. Here we I'm go. Good. Here we go. Why you got to start out that? You got to, that was a, a hell of a pause and a sigh, bro. Free the land, Kali. Free the land, free the land by any means necessary. No, no I, I, I'm. I'm uh, You're just wrong. That's what you. Are. I'm, you I'm, I'm trying to gauge uh, how nice I should be. You, uh, you're going to be very nice. You're going I'm to be analytical. To... You're going to be critical, but you're going to be nice about it. I'm. I'm gonna try. Oh I'm God! Try. Here we go. I, I Here we go. I'm, I'm gonna try. <laughs> All right. So let me get some of these some of my prefatory remarks out of the way. Then I'm going to let you do your thing in the Kali-esque way that you are accustomed to doing it. I'm not here to police you, bro. I'm not here to do that. <laughs> so 
let's get into this again based on charles blow's 2021 book the devil you know hbo documentary now that we can see if we have not read the book now we get an idea visually of what he's talking about south to black power it dropped on tuesday on hbo and blow's premise is that we are still a sizable presence in areas of the country where historically we were the majority in the south and we need to return to those areas and through our numbers politically take over the reins of power which he says are the state legislatures more so than cities and counties he says in the beginning his idea of black power as he defines it is for black people to have more of a say over how they are governed that sounds like self-determination to me we'll see his next statements about not wanting to take anything away from you, we make the assumption that he's talking to a white person, a beneficiary of white supremacy. He says that what he wants to do is remove white supremacy as a burden for people who look like him. And I just think that that is just so incredibly naive. Of course, this is going to take something away from white people. White people have thrive and benefit from our oppression. They sit on top of us. When W.B. Du Bois talks about the psychological wage of white supremacy, it's more than just a material benefit, tangible benefit. There's something psychologically going on also. But the real yeah. thing I want to deal with today, after Kali finishes being Kali-esque, <laughs> is what is useful about this film? What is useful about, what can we take away from this? So... Um, let me, again, these are my prefatory remarks, and then I'm going to hand the uh, conversation over to Kali. Hopefully Kamal can join us. And if it don't get too spicy, we can see what folks in the chat, in the chat are talking about. So what is useful about this film? I think that it puts us out there, the new African independence movement. Of course, it portrays the new African independence movement as independence movement as over and done with. And we can say that that is part and parcel of the propaganda war against us, that this media in service to a white supremacist state is doing what it's supposed to do. But my question is, what about us? Are we doing all that we are supposed to do? Is it really their fault? Or should I say, who whose fault is it that the promotion of the new African independence movement is the way that it particularly is? Right? Somebody called me. Sorry about that. So other than that, Believing that this can exist, black people, either black people taking over these centers in the South, believing that this can exist within the U.S., the current U.S. structure, to me is beyond naive. What I said earlier about him, uh, me thinking that was just so naive, but this is beyond naive. Now, I'm told, I remember Chokwe Lumumba once told me, he said, that Imari Obadele believed the same thing. He believed that a Republic of New Africa could exist side by side with the U.S. I thought that was crazy when I first heard it. I still think it's crazy. There will never be a new Africa, a free new Africa, as long as U.S. imperialism is alive and well. Uh, Blow, in the beginnings of the documentary, he talks, he uses the word fled. He says that we need to return to the areas from which we fled from. But he says nothing about the terrorisms, with an S, of why we left in the first place. I don't like to be seen as a fear monger, as portraying fear, but to not mention the potential for violent white terrorism to me is problematic in this documentary. I think that we do ourselves a disservice if we continuously portray and view white supremacy as Oh, these people are dumb. They're morons. They're not that smart. These people are very, very dangerous, whether they're wearing sheets or not. And they're armed. And they have no qualms about using their arms against us Black folks. Of course, he says, if you saw the documentary, he says that Black people taking over these areas, it doesn't mean no more poverty. It doesn't mean no more income inequality. It doesn't mean everybody gets to go to school for free. Well, then that means that capitalism has been left untouched. I know Kali going to rip that apart, so I ain't going to say no more about that. What I do appreciate in the film is the, the story about Vermont, which I don't think I had ever heard of before. 
talking about the fact that there was an experiment, an idea, let's change a state. All of these white hippies in the late 60s, early 70s, move to Vermont and then take it over, flip it from being a conservative state to a state of quote unquote, uh, progressive state. I saw your boy Bernie in the film, uh, Kali, uh, his name wasn't mentioned, but we hear these kinds of comparisons all the time. Well, if, if the if the Chinese can come over here and do such and such, and if the Jews can do such and such, well, if these white folks can move to Vermont, why we can't do the same thing? We hear these kind of comparisons all the time. And then he pivots to the RNA. So the first thing I want to say about that, two things. The reason that I think we can't do certain things like other groups do certain things is because we have not accurately understood the depths of anti-Blackness. And I mean that as taught by Frank Wilderson. Shout out to Dr. Jared Ball, and I mix what I like. I'm talking about the anti-Blackness, which is, is an utter disdain for Black life, that there is absolutely nothing too horrific that can be done to Black people, because there is something deep within the libidinal economy, those are Frank's words, of white people, when he talks about that Black people are a source of anxiety for white people, he's talking about the need to control Black people, but the ever-present threat that we pose, and I'm talking about beyond the threat of what Ida B. Wells talks about in lynching, the ever-present threat of, I think, what Dr. Welsing talked about, white genetic annihilation, which to me explains that libidinal economy statement of how there's nothing too horrific that can happen to Black people, which is why anti-Blackness plays out in when somebody else does a crime, it's a slap on the wrist. When Black people commit a crime, it is the f it is portending the fall of Western civilization. Oh my God, we got to do something. Of course, my other criticism within this, as I mentioned earlier, is the portrayal of the promotion that the RNA and thus the New African Independence Mover are New African Independence Movement are over and done with. But as I mentioned above, that's not his fault alone. And then he talks about using the Constitution as an instrument of our liberation. Uh, for those of y'all in the uh, chat and watching, familiarize yourself with the works of Yusef Naeem Klai, Dr. Y.N. Klai, who talks about the fact that the Constitution is a foundationally anti-Black document. Black people and Native Americans were left out of these documents, except to further repress at the founding of this country. Much of the work being done now by Black people in our communities, our activism, it is a human rights struggle, but it's within the framework of a struggle for democratic rights. We are consistently trying to make the U.S. live up to the flowery language in the Constitution. And yet we must remember that the Black Panther Party in 1970 or 71 said we need a revolutionary people's constitutional convention. We need a do-over because this filthy rag piece of paper known as the Constitution. Has, it's too flawed. It's got to be done over. Now, understanding, of course, that Charles Blow is not a revolutionary. He never said he was. No one has ever said he was. He is clearly part of the Black bourgeoisie, the talented 10th, Grambling, Kappa Alpha Psi, New York Times, all that jazz. That's who he is. That's understood. Real quick, I want to throw out a couple of things. In addition to asking about what is the usefulness and that's mainly why I wanted to have Kali on here to give a critique, but also tell us what is useful. Let me just shout out real quick a couple of things that I did like <laughs> about the documentary. Charles Blow's mama making potato salad without measuring was the blackest damn thing I saw on TV this week. The second blackest damn thing I saw on TV week this week was his friend Janine, the banker in Atlanta breaking down the code switching in terms of her accent to get a better position. And lastly, the other thing I want to shout out, and this is more of a journalistic piece, is despite or in spite of certain black power media folks, <coughs> Ball, <clears throat> in spite of their condemnation of Dear Mama and the 1619 Project, what I want to say is that American journalism almost demands that you, the journalist or the interviewer, keep yourself out of the story. 
And I think it's a wonderful intervention to see the interviewer or the journalist also tell their personal story as they tell a larger story regarding our people. So I'm talking about when one of the Hughes brothers, I don't know who did Dear Mama, was it Alan or Albert? But anyway, he sits down as he's interviewing someone about Tupac and the person who was inter he was interviewing now begins to interview him. I'm talking about Nicole Hannah Jones bringing her family's history and contemporary life into the story of the 1619 Project and Charles Blow using his personal lens as an ingredient in the telling of this story. So those were just a couple of the things that I wanted to get out. But as I said, I was really, really, my, my, my real purpose is to have Brother Kali come on and talk to us about this particular work regarding this particular history that he and I both know so intimately. And again, it's quite possible Kamal will threaten to join us. But for now, Brother Kali, I'm going to turn it over to you. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm gonna hit Kamal up uh, on the text message, so uh, you know maybe he'll be a little bit more. I'm gonna try to be as sanitized as you were. I, yeah, come I, on, I, man, come on. I, 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 no, we already had one sanitization, so you come I'll on try. and bring it. Just don't talk about well, his mama or call him names. Come on. Well, look, hey, um, let me tell you how intimate some of this goes. Please. Uh, his family, my family, in a in a land dispute in Gib, uh, uh, Gibsland, where he's from. That's where some of my folks is from. They've been in a land dispute for a while. So you do uh, have names for him. All oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm 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 gonna leave that be. Uh, okay. I'm gonna leave that. Be. All right. But um, so look, I'm gonna give you some dap. Uh, number one. Let me start off with that because start off turning off your phone, man, or whatever that is. Is that you or me? <laughs> That's me. The okay. folks blowing me up for for, for work, uh, so y'all have to just uh, the uh, um, you know bear with me on some of this stuff. I, I'm not gonna answer nothing, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't say I'm not gonna get texts and all this other stuff. But uh, but back to this. Let me give you know you some props because um, I want everybody to know uh, before the book even came out. Uh, Tanya hit me up and said we need to cover this and 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 uh, uh, deal with it and look at it and interrogate it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you had pushed me to do some writing on it, and I had committed to doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I got two chapters into the book and threw it. I was just like, no, nah, I I can't. Uh, I'm not gonna waste my time. It's not a waste uh, of time. But all right, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, you know, I'm like, I, I I'm like, my time is precious. So <laughs> like, I'm not. I I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Uh, and, <clears throat> uh, you know, you, you hit me up about doing this and I forgot this documentary was coming out. You know, I remember they went there, they were, there was some, they made the round of Jackson and they, they were trying to do some, some interviews. And I think, uh, uh, you know, a couple of things got blocked, you know, we'll leave that alone for now. But, um, uh, in the, and you said that we should talk about it. So this is, this is the one thing I will say. I'll give you and Brother Devin. What you know, one something. thing? One thing? Come on. I only got one thing that I would support is that uh its its production is enabling more conversation. Mm -hmm. I will I will give it that dap, if only because you know it it is uh, enabled you or others, you know, to take it up and give it a platform. Now, quite honestly, I wish it was not the work uh that was getting this level of coverage and this level of platform. But right. you know, when, when you are a tool of the bourgeoisie, of which, you know, that's what he is. That's what his role was at the New York Times. That's how he got this uh, uh, access and why he was able to, to pull this documentary uh, because of his relationships, et cetera. Um, you know, he gets this platform. Mm -hmm. um, now, let me just say off the bat, there was not one original idea in the book and there was mm -hmm. not one original idea in the video. Mm -hmm. I just want folks, you know, to, to, to be dispelled of that uh, notion that he brought any new argument or anything to, to the equation. He did not. Not one. Mm -hmm. uh, his own personal story, uh, if you want to include that, you know, that's rich. That should always be honored. We all got our own uh, personal stories. But from mm -hmm. a theoretical and a historical perspective, not one new argument. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And in many respects, I would say, you know, if we're being honest, the, the work is rather tailored. Uh, <laughs> and I think the only way, only reason it kind of comes out, uh, which he says a bit in the video, like he wrote the book primarily for himself, right? Mm -hmm. He was arguing with himself about justifying his own uh, return to uh, Atlanta uh, and leaving New York, but also questioning why he left Northern Louisiana in the first place, right? The the, the kind of the brain drain. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that sense, you know, as, if, if he's trying to answer himself, I, I I applaud him for making the journey back. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. not enough people have done that. But, you know, we have been pushing folks to do that longer than I've been alive. I know the New African Independence Movement has been doing been doing that. Um, mm -hmm. So that's not particularly uh, new. Um, so without ragging on it further, let me, I want to deal with some of the questions that you posed. Because okay, I think so that's, that's more germane, actually. That's more, more, more relevant. There's Kamal. Okay, so, and I want you to... I want you, you to do that, but I also you want to leave Kamal in the background. I'm bring since you threatened and you made good on your threat and you here. Let me bring you up in here now, but please, Kali, continue. Yeah, so so Kamal to bring you up if you ain't heard. I, I don't have no respect for the book or the or the I thought the, the documentary was trash. Um we're on uh, similar pages. We're on similar pages. I, that's my that's my summary in short, and I was moving <laughs> past that. Um, <laughs> Now, I want to address this question because I think it's more more relevant question, honestly, Tandi, is mm -hmm. um, the deficiencies in the new African independence movement. Mm -hmm. right? Like, why, why isn't uh, our history, narrative, uh, uh, politics, and ideology out there more? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a complex question, but I'm going to try to give two basic answers. One of them, uh, is internal and, and is that that look we just don't have our shit together enough um at this stage of the game um so that's just that's number one but number two uh, we cannot look away from what the empire has done to us and what it will do to us in posing a challenge to it in any form or fashion Right. And, you know, to come back to his argument, to come back to the book, to come back to the video. His video and his book is in the service of a black petty bourgeois narrative, which is about being in partnership with the empire, not mm -hmm. challenging. Mm -hmm. So that can get promoted. That will get bankrolled. That will get an audience. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way me and you and come out, we ain't going to get that. And we just need to accept that. And understand that that our work is deep in the trenches to the, whatever extent it possible, and you know we got to organize at this stage of the game and in, in the ones and twos, um, and and try to set up a, a foundation to be able, both within our lifetime, but also understand that beyond it, uh, that we are leaving enough of a legacy that and, and clear enough ideology and program that those behind us can pick up and run the torch with. That is what our role is, given what our age what our positionality, what our work is. Uh, and I don't think that we need to shy away from that. I think we need to be be clear about that. And I'm just up now to this opinion on a certain level that, uh, you know, we need to whine about uh, what the mainstream media is not doing and give us, they, they doing what they're supposed to do. They ain't supposed to tell our story. They ain't supposed to give us no narrative. They ain't supposed to give us no love. They are enemies, mm -hmm. period. Hold, right? hold, that thought. hold that thought real quick. I see some folks... Who came in late? We're talking about the HBO documentary South to Black Power, which is based on New York Times columnist Charles Blow's book, The Devil You Know, in which he argues that there should be a reverse migration of Black people back into the South from the areas that we fled and take over state legislatures, essentially. I'm sorry. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Continue. So yeah, I mean, and just on a certain material <laughs> level, you know, his argument is about 25 to 30 years behind trends that were already in motion, mm -hmm. right? Like Atlanta is part of a trend that's, which is actually being undermined. Like, you know, in, in fact, Atlanta is being gutted of its majority Black population and has been so, I would say, really for the last 20 years, 
-hmm. on the basis of what the black petty bourgeois leadership of the city has programmatically committed to destroying mm -hmm. public housing, Hmm. Uh, uh, you know, it, it advancing the, the core interests of a few uh, corporate, uh, uh, global corporate entities hmm. uh, at the core expense of the, of the black working class uh, in the city, you know, for their own uh, enrichment. And so hmm. he was, I mean, in part of the video, he says he wants to, what do he say, uh, Atlanta was a proof of concept? No, it ain't. No mention of black power. No mention of black power anywhere in this documentary. Yeah, like maybe in the 70s you could have made a, an argument uh, like that, but that would even be questionable. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is the other piece that I, that, that, that I was deeply upset with both the book and, and the documentary even more so. Mm -hmm. It's ahistoric. I'm like, come on, bro. You got all these resources at your command. You know, uh, academics out the yin-yang, folks who know uh, the history and can pull some of this stuff up. Uh and you, you got to present a better showing of our history than, than what you did. Like you trivialize it in such a way uh, to be like, you know, it was, it was over after August, you know, uh, 21st, 1971. Like, no, bro, come on. Where, 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 you know, uh, uh, like why that's you what, essentially that's you know, what he said. That's what he said. No, I mean, I mean, that's straight up what he said. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that option was closed in, 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 uh, finished. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and then and this this narrative of of uh, you know part of his argument really rests with with Booker T. That shows you how old what what some of what he was arguing for uh, uh, is and has been experimented with in this piece that um, we were. Well, I'm bringing this up. We can't be a historic, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, to say that we tried things and failed, uh, that's not to to point out. You know, uh, uh, anything that we need to be uh, uh, ashamed of, we need to interrogate the, both the internal and external dynamics of why we fail. But we have tried many experiments similar to what he's talking about: North Carolina, in Florida, uh, mm -hmm. in Georgia, intentional communities that our people uh, tried and, and, and built, most of which were burnt out. He mm -hmm. hardly mentioned anything about the white terror. Uh, yeah, you know, just white terror at all, as if it didn't mm -hmm. exist, or if it wouldn't continue uh, mm -hmm. to exist or accelerate. So, with he made this documentary, you know, put this in context. He made this documentary absent of the active threat of the neo Confederates and neo fascists on the field right now. Mm -hmm. He made this documentary after January six. Mm -hmm. He made this documentary, you know, after all the state legislative moves that have been done in Mississippi, in Louisiana, in Texas in North Carolina, in Florida, they've been very explicitly, you know, uh, geared to remove black folks from having access to the right to vote. He overplayed up, in my view, what happened uh, in Georgia and what's what's kind of taking place in North Carolina uh, uh, as a model, but he accentuates that to really highlight a, a particular relationship with the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. right? Uh, which is not a, uh, the Democratic Party ain't paid no attention to the, to the black, uh, majorities on the county level in you know uh uh since uh uh Lyndon Bain Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not saying that hyperbolically, I'm saying that substantively. They don't put no money, you know, they, they put more money in now to what Stacey Evans and a couple of other folks are doing than they've ever done in any other period in time. And that's only a uh 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 you know that's still a, a massive joke in terms of the amount of fun funding and resources they were put into other uh kind of campaigns so we we got to really i think um uh, use our platforms to really highlight uh the the elements of our strategy um which you know the piece where i'm saying i'm gonna be nice on and i'm glad we got kamal on and he was able uh to make it you know because he shows jackson Mm -hmm. And I want your audience to know, uh, uh, for the record, uh, you you looking at two of the key people behind that experiment uh, 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 and the placement of that in the theory of that. Um, and But he totally distorted that and just made it uh, uh, about one person and, and, and their, his descendants without a real acknowledgement of the movement and the generations of work that we were standing upon 
uh, to lay a foundation. And if it was like totally gone from 1971, you wouldn't even have choke. Why interview you in choke way and talk? Right. Yeah, I think uh, he was forced to do it. Yeah. I, 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 I never read the book, but I skimmed it. And obviously I did watch the documentary for, for the purposes of tonight. Um, and so my, you know, very similar to Kali, mm-hmm. I think the only reason he's, he, he, hundred, he started to get pushback. Well, people started to bring up to him something I believe he already knew and chose to ignore. Mm-hmm. There's no way that someone with that much resources, that level of education, somebody who, uh, uh, has an intellect to research and the idea of going back to the South or remigrating doesn't stumble upon documents <laughs> of the Republic of New Africa. And, and again, I would even suggest no, that. Come out. Even I, before, I, 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 I know you're going to say, let me, let me, I, I'm going to suggest that he already, he heard of the idea beforehand and recast it as something as a liberal idea. But I basically, he stole the whole idea from the Republic of New Africa, from the African uh, brotherhood, from the communist party, from from uh, um, 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 uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, ha- um, Harry was Harry Harry Haywood. Harry Hayward. I'm mm-hmm. sure he knew that history and decided to take out all the radical politics for it mm-hmm. and to update it because it was a, it's a theme that he probably does think is good, but could not sell with the radical politics attached to it to the audience that he was attempting to reach or address. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry, you wanted to say something between that, colleague? No, I, I was, I was, I. Was, I met the brother on a couple of different oh. occasions. I met him in New York at M- in MHGM New York events ba- um, based on your work oh. from when you was up there, things that y'all was around. He would, he would come around a couple of different things. Uh, I remember him coming to a, a political prisoner event, I think must have been like 2002. He'd been on the scene. He knew mm. MHG. That wasn't foreign or okay. alien to okay. him. So that it's I did not know. Okay. In and other words... Was, its omission was intentional. He doesn't, yeah. in other words, the he knew about the Jackson Cush plan. Yeah, he knew yeah. about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I you know, yeah. even in my beginning formulation, I gave too much credit. I should say, I, I should have said that he read that he obviously is somebody who knew about this history. And I didn't know those facts that Kali just laid out, but who knew about that history and stripped it bare. <laughs> and I think at the beginning, actually started, decided to take credit for it. And then got caught out somewhat and decided, mm-hmm. even in this documentary, to do a little bit of sort of performance on where some of this comes from, comes from that he did. But I but it's obvious that this is a middle class bourgeois electoral position, which, again, I don't think is totally wrong in a sense of, yes, again, we bought we've that 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 is a theme of moving back to the south for a number of different types of ways to grab power. The electoral position is included in that, but what he does, and it's like like the most pivotal part of the documentary, I thought, when he was recurring or retelling the 71 story, and then he sat on the steps and said, but I was talking about, I'm talking about power within the constitution or within (laughs) the United States, whatever like that. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, he looked square, his eyes squarely into the camera to make that point. Mm-hmm. I'm no basically I'm no radical, right? I'm not don't telling shoot you, me up. Don't don't shoot me up. I don't I'm not trying to wind up like that. And right. from there on, basically it is a homage to middle class black America as he travels around and speaks to voting rights groups and middle class types around the the the, the what we could all quote unquote achieve by moving back to the south. So I think it's a gutting of a history. Um, a gutting of a radical history, of a nationalist history, of a militant history, um, for the purposes of a squarely liberalized attempt. But I do think an attempt to suggest that through majority, having Black people in the majority, that they would be more quote unquote Black power. Now, what would that actually lead to if people are not politicized or people are not radicalized? You, it would lead to the same things that Kali is talking about we have now, that we have now in these cities. We would have, we still would have, there's, there's no conversation whatsoever about uh, 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 who owns capital in these southern states, who are the developers in these southern states. That's still multinational corporations and locally 
uh, uh, well-situated big corporations that are white owned and white dominated. So our majority position does not stop them from doing what they do best, which is putting black Negro or putting Negroes in their place. <laughs> even if they, even if we even think about stepping out by making threats of losing capital and people who are not thinking of alternative means of economic development are strictly going to be under siege when those things are happening because they can't even think out the box to think about what it looks like to develop, use political power to develop alternative economies, right? So none of that stuff is even being considered whatsoever. The victory is, again, is a victory that we've heard since the 1970s, since the the, the sort of uh, uh, stripping of the, even the Black Power slogan of any radicalness is if we get certain elected, if we get elected officials in who look like us, by some means, that means that we've arrived or that's a victory in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And look how beautiful and happy and successful we are as Black people. And so therefore, that is that means that the vast majority are somehow is being are, are, are under the guise of some sort of successful undertaking. Right. So I think he I think that's purposeful. I think that's his own positioning. Again, there are certain things about his own challenging of his his compatriots in The New York Times about a brain drain that I did appreciate. Um, I think even the fact that the person is thinking about it and putting forth a position that allows us to maybe take it and re-radicalize it, I think that's an opportunity. But I completely agree with the other point that Kali, um, I mean, I was saying Kali, but that, that uh, Kali is making, which is the telling of our radical history can't be left to anybody but us, right? And even those who are part of that radical history but have de-radicalized themselves mm. in order to maintain positionality mm. or to gain positionality mm. also won't tell the true tale of the radical nature of the politics that even led to the Jackson plan itself. Mm. Um, so we are, we are fighting those type of battles for the telling of history, um, for what gets projected as the historical accedents to the moments that we're in, um, what exactly is kind of what victories we've won, what victories we've lost, what victories we've even sabotaged, right? Mm -hmm. All of that is is at this stage, particularly at this stage, you know, this, this relatively late stage in our lives. Um, you know, we need to do a better job of of pulling together, of talking about more, of having those discussions, um, but of making sure that that story begins to get told, because even through the Jackson Plan. There's a rich history of even confrontation, debate. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would I would even say capitulation. But there's a rich history that others can learn from uh, when they attempt to do something that at the time seemed to be a very strategic switch in the ways in which we were thinking about radical politics, particularly after the election of Obama, right? So I think that's a history to be told, to be debated, to be discussed, to be thought through. Um, and it's something that can lead to other examples of how we get work done and organize ourselves and our people. Uh, but it's also a tale of what can happen when you think you have success, but when all the other, uh, um, uh, uh, let's say, other issues around it are not moving as fast as the so-called electoral work, right? And so when the when the idea of land development and land seizure or the idea of some, again, alternative economic models that give us resources to even challenge, when those things are not in place, when the radical nature of politics is not in place and people are not pushing radical politics even through the 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 electoral cycle. So, you know, one of my great um, um you know, when I when I tell the story, one of, one of the things I consider to be, the, the, you know, one, a huge mishap is that my discovery that, you know, a lot of the, the chapter in Mississippi of the Malcolm X grassroots movement was filled with race men and not radical organizers. Right. And by that, I mean race men who were happy to uh, be a part of Shokwe's victory, but only wanted to get the contracts that they thought would flow from that victory mm. and i and that was what took place and so any challenge to the status quo was felt to be a challenge against the possibilities of getting contracts mm. um as opposed to laying out or, or work and working closer to 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 
uh, uh, Venezuela that Kali had. I don't, you know, I don't want to get you in no, 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 you know, trouble with the law. You're gonna give me no more trouble than okay. Marty. <laughs> but the contacts with Venezuela and Chavez at the time and so forth that were being explored, that those were real contacts and those were real ideas that could have manifested themselves with the victory that was at hand. Um, but as opposed to again exploring that, people got scared because they allowed corporate media to scare them. They allowed, again, uh, um, uh, uh, Republican politicians to scare them. Uh, they allowed uh, uh, folks with uh, finance to scare them. And mm -hmm. so no attempt was made in my, from outside, and by that point, I'm outside looking in at that stage. But it didn't seem like an attempt was made um, by those who were, at that time, insiders to even challenge the boundaries of what economic power could be derived from having political power, knowing, of course, it would be challenged, right? Knowing, of course, there would be pushback. But even in that pushback, it's an opportunity for organizing. But without moving forward and challenging them on the very platforms that they own, then basically you succumb to their will anyway, which is why what we have, what we, we mm. have, what we have, right? Two mm -hmm. terms of someone who calls, who says, a quote, is that Jackson will be the most radical city in the country. Right. At, at best, you know, this is not to, to shit on this, uh, maybe some of the positives that have happened. Sorry about that, Khaled. At best, at best, you know, we've, we've, we've got a liberal local government that is no different than any liberal local government, except for the fact that there are some radical words sprinkled on top of it. And that is something I think we all have to deal with in terms of the politics um, the the legacy of what we would call the Jackson plan, and even going further back, of course, the legacy which of the Republic of New Africa that still exists, and the critiques and discussion around the Republic of New Africa and what it was and what it is and what it can be or what it will ever be again. Those are real discussions to be had around the idea of nationalism, which I still believe is a viable, the most viable political option for us as black people within the United States is a form of nationalism. I still believe that to this day, still believe that to this day. I don't necessarily, the organization I built afterwards, Community Movement Builders, we were not uh, self-described as a new African organization, but the politics and programs, a lot of it was based on the work priorly done in the Malcolm X grassroots movement, because I still believed in those politics. But the question becomes, how do we carry that through? How do we organize and work to make that happen? How do we, again, look at those mistakes? Um, and how do we continue to refresh these organizations with young folks, uh, young organizers, train them up, get them to start thinking about how to organize, how to get folks on the ground? Those are the things I think that are still at hand that we must do, um, which, of course, a documentary and book that was written will never, ever cover, think about move us forward or move us towards, it will do everything in its power to actually say, because I think it was a couple of times, even in his speeches, he said, what if we, we skip the begging? He, he, he put it down as we skip right. the marching, we skip the demonstration, which was in his own way, a way of saying the political action, we don't need to do all that if we just vote. If we just get the majority and vote, well, those folks are still controlled by the Democratic Party. They're still answerable to the Democratic Party. So that is no solution in itself whatsoever. But again, I think he knows that going into it. Or he, his solution is a certain kind of solution. Well, he wants, he wants to sell us on that. Yeah. See, that that's, that's, the, that's the piece that, that I find most insidious about this whole thing. He's, he's selling a pipe dream. Hold that thought. If you joined us late, if you're still confused, we're talking about the HBO documentary, South to Black Power, which is based on the book, The Devil You Know, by New York Times columnist Charles Blow. Go ahead, Kali. Yeah, he's selling the pipe dream. Um, again, this is where the, 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 like the, the, he touches on a couple of things, but it's so a historic because he, mm -hmm. you like, you assume in his, in his argument, he's assuming that the right to vote for black people is a given right within this structure. And there's nothing given about black. We're the only group of folks uh, 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 within it who constantly got to get, get our voting rights renewed. But you heard the man say using the Constitution as a means for your liberation. Right. So I want to come back to the part, of, part of it. Right about there, why. what we dealing with. 
Right. So we, when you was talking about the the the, the works of Brother Cly, mm -hmm. uh, which I respect, but I got some major differences with. And don't get I'm, me started I'm, on Frank. I'm sure you do, but okay. Don't even get me started on Frank. That's a whole other issue. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but on 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 the Cly piece, mm -hmm. this I would argue there with some of the works. This notion that that we were excluded. Right, still pertains, uh, uh, like some undemocratic practice on behalf of white folks, mm -hmm. right? Like they kind of they just didn't think about this. No, we they we were very oh, conscious, and clear. absolutely, yeah, they, were, yes. they, were, they were very conscious and clear about what their relationship was with the, with the indigenous folks and what their relationship was with us. So that's the document that was, we were not omitted, we deeply embedded in that thing. Three fourths and beyond, right? Mm -hmm. We were property, mm -hmm. right? S straight up, they were very clear. I think what the his, with us. Our humanity was not recognized. We were they recognized as a threat. Well, okay, that's but again, this is one of the you know, and I I've, I've worked in the human rights framework and all that other kind of stuff. And there's aspects yes, I find of it strategic. Mm -hmm. But let's mm -hmm. look. Let's be real. Like humanity, in in the sense in which those rights frameworks have been uh, constructed, that's a Eurocentric concept. Mm -hmm. Right, which uh, is is measured by one's level of like education, uh, religious affiliation, all these historical pieces that ain't got a goddamn thing to do with us. <laughs> Nothing yes, to do sir. with us historically, right? And if we're gonna go, you know, uh, realistically, I'm gonna borrow from Cabral. If we're gonna go back to the return to the source, we got to look at our own frameworks of analysis and points of orientation to be our guide. Right, and I, I will engage your rights framework to the extent that I have to engage, you know, power in the real, in the material world. But I'm not trying to have that conscribe what it is I think or how I think about what the world should look like and how it should function. Mm -hmm. Right, and this is one of these deep traps that we get into when we start talking about, you know, uh, democratic inclusion and like what, like I'm gonna borrow from Malcolm. Who are they to be defined to? or by, or in association with, hmm. right? You know, or I'm a, I'm a borrow from Gandhi now. Like I've heard about Western civilization. It sounds like a good idea, <laughs> but I ain't seen nothing ever civilized about it at one point, mm -hmm. right? So like, that's not a measure. That's not a standard by which mm -hmm. we should go by. And we need to be very clear from the beginning of this settler colony, we have always been integrated within it, always as capital, as chattel, mm -hmm. right? And if we gonna break that, that's for us to break. Mm -hmm. That's not something somebody's gonna give to us, to concede to us. And we we sitting there on the basis of having this conversation, not because a bunch of folks just voted, that played a particular role in it, but because African people fought every goddamn inch at every period, every time we've ever been here, right? Mm -hmm. And if folks wanna get a clear account of that, I would say, you know, you have to go look at, uh, um, uh, 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 why am I forgetting his name? Uh, Prayer View, uh, professor, uh, used to be with the Communist Party. Um, he's been on a good string here. Of uh, not, um, not, not Prayer View, Te University of Texas, Austin, Gerald Horn. Gerald Horn, there you go. I don't know why I forgot Brother Horn's name right now, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh the counter revolution of 1776. Mm. You know, if you want to look at some history, start there. Mm. And folks need to be clear, like, you know, what, and if you listen to some of his speeches, he himself acknowledged that in terms of him doing the research on that, he had to even rethink his own positionality coming within the Communist Party framework of how to, to analyze U.S. history, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because, you know, and folks need to be on the inside of what I mean. You know, us using, you know, the analogy of the United States or the analysis, let me not say analogy, because it is a concrete reality that this is a settler colonial project. And if you don't understand that, and if you don't start with that as a projective, you wind up trying to include yourself in something that you shouldn't be included in. Oh, well. Nor should you want to be included in, in any form, form or fashion. Because I'm not a colonizer. I didn't come here still in nobody's land, nor did my folks do that. We were brought here and we're trying to be in right relationship, you know, with the people who were here and a right relationship with the land that our, our ancestors bled, sweat, and died for and have a right to. So that is the fundamental principle by which I think we need to stand upon. But you trying to be engaged, that's what I was saying early on. 
you trying to be included in, in the, the functioning of this empire, that means you, you're going to have to be responsible for his crimes. Mm. Right? You're going to mm-hmm. have to be responsible. And, and, and we need to be very clear about this, about, uh, uh, you know, like something that I saw Kamal post that I had to repost uh, uh, myself today about some of these folks from the squad, quote unquote, uh, out there supporting uh, this notion that uh, to criticize uh, Israel, another settler colonial project, is to somehow be be anti-Semitic. So mm-hmm. these are the if you're going to accept that framework of what with Mr. Blow is articulating, then you're going to have to accept those politics, and then you're going to have to answer ultimately at the end of the day for how our folks in the Caribbean get treated, how our folks mm-hmm. on the continent get treated, how our folks in Latin America and South America get treated. Like, are you going to be partisan? Uh, to their exploitation, to their mass murder, right? Are you going to play the Colin Powell role? Like, we need to be very clear about who our friends and who our enemies are and what our positionality is, which is why I, I can't buy in any form or fashion this notion that he's articulating that mm-hmm. that uh, we work within their constitutional framework. We utilize mm-hmm. it, you know, for for uh, its advantages, but we don't challenge its, its underlying, uh, underlying premises for what they are. Well, if you don't do that, then you can't be no friend or ally of mine. Not mm-hmm. even on a technical level at the end of the day, yeah. right? Because I know you're going to be one of the main people out there uh, 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 excusing genocide, mm-hmm. which we see going on right now in Palestine. Mm-hmm. Which right? is only his only article, his only editorial that mentions it, mentioned it in, in, in relationship to how Biden will get uh, uh, Biden in votes. No condemning no calling out, uh, nothing even close to suggesting that Israel as a settler colonial nation is committing genocide, ethnic cleansing, displacing, no language of that use whatsoever. He went right down at the Obama typical liberal talking points uh, of both siding the issue at best, at Mm -hmm. best, did not wrote anything with the free hand and will that the New York Times probably gives him. He knows better. Doesn't even have to, he doesn't even have to go to his masters and say, hey, boss, can I write this? He already knows better, right? <laughs> he knows better. And that's exactly, like, so he's already trained. And he's, he, he, he's going to be the, 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 the Bayard Rustin who sells out the radical movement. He is right. going to be the, 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 the um, uh, who's Supreme Court justice? What was the Supreme Court? The, the justice, um, the first Third, black, huh? Talking about Marshall. Marshall. Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall. Who's, the FBI who's informant, to, FBI 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 informant who spied on radical pointing out the communists. He's going to be the Andy Young who, who tells Dr. Mm-hmm. King to get in line and work with these, these capitalists. So any, any, any strategic, uh, there's no such thing like you said, strategic alliance, because as soon as something is too radical or too left, or it scares the, his, his own position of wealth within the system, then it's gone, right? And so it's more plotting. It's more begging. He keeps bringing up Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams left the South. Hmm. Now a teacher in D.C. Hmm. Some people might want to consider that still the South, but it's not the main part or whatever. But she yeah. left, right? She, she's like, I, try, I tried my hand at two, at two uh, uh, attempts. She's gone now, hmm. right? So, and, and they had, the, the, you know, the, there's the troubles within some of the organizations that were created. I'll leave it at that. Um, but the focus in only on these voting rights institutions, hmm. only on the voting, st- no, no conversations whatsoever. No one that he spoke to whatsoever felt to me like some grassroots movement building organization that even could bring up and have a part of that conversation. He didn't interview anybody from the, from, from the movement, uh, even, even in spite of showing the clip. But the, the, the movement around the Republic of New Africa to, to challenge the precepts of this kind of constitutionality approach mm-hmm. to why people, why black folks should move back to the South and what would be the ultimate gain uh, or, or ultimate vision of doing so. All of that was thrown to the side. Right. So this so this person is thoroughly liberal in their views um, and they say they, they serve a liberal purpose. If I give any uh, any compliments? I, th- I think even the idea, though, of telling black people to move back and have a majority in some places, I'm not. I'm not completely mad at it, even if it's stripped from its <laughs> radical origins and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a bad. That's at best. You know, it may get people to thinking and looking, and maybe move them, as we all say. 
But remember this, I mean, but the, 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 the totality of what this person is preaching is not any, is not the radical notion of the Republic of New Africa. It is not even a radical notion of the Communist Party and the Black Belt South theory. This is purely um, a, a, a bourgeois establishment view of what Black majorities can do, uh, which ain't much once there is a Black majority. Hmm. So look, <clears throat> um, I, I I promise I was gonna be nice. I've been nice. I've you didn't. Nice. Okay, my did. I did ask you to be nice, but I've to bring nice. it, <laughs> I did ask that. Um, but if 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 if, it got, if it's bursting forth, brother, let it out. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just 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 to be 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 clear about. I think our positionality. Mm -hmm. and be clear with the audience um you know he's talking about to, to summarize he's talking about perfecting you know he's he, what did obama's like a more perfect union a more perfect union yes look let's be clear this thing got to be destroyed mm. don't let's not hide about it let's not you know you know play no tricks with it it's got to be destroyed Got to go, go. right it's got to go like for the sake of humanity, mm -hmm. this damn thing got to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And we play and we should play for the sake of our ancestors, right? Uh, and, and for the well being of, of our future things. generations, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm a bar for Mary on that one. I, I love that quote, right? Uh, hey, this thing got to go and, and be very clear about that. And understand that, Mr. Blow, you need to leave the rapping to Curtis. Uh, you know, and and uh, step off the stage on this argument, like the, you know, uh, uh, that, that's my, you know, real bottom line uh, piece to it. Hmm. Like that's that's the that's the real deal because, uh, you know, you putting some folks in in uh, harm's way, you hmm. know, uh, uh, in truth, because his inclusion argument. You know, let's let's really analyze what this means in terms of what these folks are are lining up for, and I'm talking about the Democrats and Republicans. Hmm. They setting up for a uh, uh, World War Three, and don't think that they not. I mean, well, World War Four, whatever you want to call it, right? Because hmm. it's not like the Cold War didn't have uh, uh, millions of casualties. They were mainly in Africa and Latin America, uh, so hmm. they just call it World War Four, uh, and they're very clear. And we already living through the beginning stages of it. And truth be told. Um, you know, but they're very clear. Uh, either either these white folks are gonna have it, or they ain't gonna share it with nobody. And that's what this whole piece is about them gearing up around China. I would, you know, I'd, I'd hate to 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 to, to be, be frank with folks. Uh, it's why genocide is acceptable uh, in Palestine because y'all best believe. Now, number one, Biden is just a straight up war criminal anyway. Has has been. Go check the record if you really want to understand it. He ain't really doing nothing new or something he ain't he, he ain't never kind of agreed to. Uh 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 and you know, just take when when he said straight up on the, what that that uh speech he gave on the ninth or whatever it was, you remember he said that if Israel didn't exist, we would have to create it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Understand mm -hmm. the, the clear implications of his ongoing. Settler colonial worldview. Don't think mm -hmm. that this settler colonial piece when I'm describing the U.S. in that regard has ended or like that was something in the past. This is how these folks think. This is how they operate. This is what they planted. So going back to this, the the, 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 the kind of a, a, a clear piece, they are calculating that they, you it, it's worth us. I mean, I'm talking about them. It's mm -hmm. worth the United States uh, killing. 20,000 and 30,000, maybe even 50,000 by the time it's all over Palestinians as just collateral to send a clear message to China and its allies about what the U.S. military is capable and willing of doing. If y'all ever think about, you know, raising your hand or raising your voice to really challenge us, this is a shot across the bow. And hmm. that's why they're not relenting on that. People need to be very clear about what the terms are. And on a certain extent, it don't matter if Biden get, get reelected because the folks on the other end are even worse relative to what they said that they would do. But we need to understand that they have they have unity 
on this, mm -hmm. this type of genocide. Mm -hmm. Clear unity on this type of genocide. Mm -hmm. And if black folks want to be a part of this project, is that what you're uniting with? Hmm. Is that what you're trying to get with? Yeah, just let me know clearly so I know friend from foe. <laughs> no, it's exactly what they're uniting around because they, and again, even obviously the, the, the people like the secretary, the, 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 uh, uh, the secretary of war, whatever his position is, uh, Lloyd, Blinken, you know, talking about? yeah, yeah, no, not Blinken. The, uh, the, the, I think the Pentagon. Oh, the mother. The, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. I forget. So that name, I mean, right? and that's that's where we're at. Where black people are identified so much with the state that that it's doubly incumbent on on those of us who are radical to break out and make sure we speak up. Thank you, Lloyd Austin. It's doubly important because so many black folks since the civil rights era have made it their job, hmm. has made it their job to align our interests with the interests of the state. And that that's from the, the conservative end, the militarized end, and the liberal end, right? Which is why you can have this so-called squad who claims to have a left or radical politic um, do nothing whatsoever in, in terms of some performative politics. But when it comes for them to actually vote on the record on something, mm -hmm. they either do present or they vote for, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and again, unless we have a strong movement that is left of that, that is pulling people away from that, that is challenging that on an on a, on a, on a everyday basis, they become the hallmarks that the rest of the world sees a lot of times as yeah. like, oh, is this, is, what, is this what's happened to the black movement? Is this what's happened to black people in terms of their relationship vis-a-vis -vis the state that basically kidnapped us, that enslaved us? That Jim Crow us, that prison industrial complex us, that ghettoized us, that our our final contribution is is being a part of it, not challenging it, but being a part of it. Mm -hmm. Now more than ever, we need mass grassroots left, militant, politicized, radical, nationalist, communist, whatever movements. <laughs> We need those movements because mm -hmm. these people are giving us a, traje a trajectory that only will mean death to us, right? Mm -hmm. Because no matter how much we even size, like like try to get close to these these folks, we, he talked about the international stuff that's going on, mm -hmm. but obviously within the United States, the return to overt white supremacy, overt, open, hostile white supremacy, gun-toting white supremacy. Hmm. organized, gun-toting, reactionary, working-class, white supremacy is a danger to us here on the ground. Absolutely. Those folks are organized. Yep. And when they say you will not replace us, they're hmm. not just talking about Jews, right? Because again, the, right now, Jewish Zionists in particular serve a purpose for their worldview of, of their Christian nationalist worldview that's, that's supposed to lead to, to the end of the world, basically, right? Mm -hmm. But they're talking about us being put in our place, mm -hmm. being put back in our place. Mm -hmm. So if we're not organized, if we think we're just going to get close to the powers that be and that somehow is going to save us, you got another thing coming. Biden, in a hot second, will throw Black people under the bus. Absolutely. If he thought for a second it meant 10 more white votes. <laughs> the whole idea of his his moderate approach was peeling away the white folks from Trump, even mm -hmm. though it never happened for the Democrats, mm -hmm. right? Even though it never happens for them, not mm -hmm. they, not since since I th it might have been Johnson or Kennedy has has a a a Democrat received a majority white vote in this country for the national slash presidential election. Mm -hmm. Johnson, but that's still Johnson. Was the last one. Johnson so that's still the, but that's still their overwhelming aim, right? Yeah. So we are just like this piecemeal thing that they can patch together. Mm -hmm. But if they can get those Trump votes back, psh, you think you you hear about abortion? Do you hear anything about a affirmative action being spoken about as a as a pillar of the Democratic Party to fight to win the, the electorate during the next election? It's like, oh, that's good. We got away, but that's gone now. <laughs> that's gone. I don't hear them talking about the, the 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 Florida governor stripping black history away 
um, other places, stripping away black history, even the minimal amount it was taught. It wasn't mm. like any, any radical history was taught in these public schools, but the minimal amount of it was taught. Right. Mm. The minimal amount that may lead to something else. That gets to, I don't I don't hear that as some major platform in the Democratic Party. Well, they, they wouldn't even bring up their own boys' bill, remember? His little, uh, uh, from Georgia, his, his voting rights security mm -hmm. uh, bill. Yeah. They, they wouldn't even bring the George Floyd Act. Right. They wouldn't even bring that up. Went so. nowhere. In mm -hmm. fact, the only thing they passed was, the, the, the most hilarious thing to me was when they passed the anti-lynching bill 60 years too late. <laughs> <laughs> And thought and acted wanted to act like they did something because they passed the anti lynch an anti lynching bill in 2023. Now wait a minute, wait a minute now. No, wait a minute, y'all. We got Juneteenth now. Come on, bro. My bad, my bad. We did get Juneteenth. We got you we got Juneteenth. Which was the oh, fastest yeah. passing holiday I've ever seen. In my I life. exactly. Kelly got jokes. Okay. If it's performative, we may get it. That's it. If it's hey, man, come, come on, you know you. Uh, yeah, you, we, you we had him like, in that. We had him in that kente cloth kneeling for. Yeah, us. you didn't. You didn't. I was just about to bring that up. You didn't. You didn't like. Uh, uh, Jamie Dimon the, the sitting in the sitting, yeah, sitting the vampire the kneeling. One one at a time. One at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Pelosi in that in that kente cloth. I got a picture of that in the house. Yeah, you know, it's just to, just to remind me every day uh, how vile and evil uh, <laughs> uh, you know these folks are. Just you know, so uh, I had to go back to my old Elijah Muhammad. You know, on the Jamie real Diamond. <laughs> Is it Jamie Diamond, the the, the owner of uh, 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 of um. What, what 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 is what is the the bank the, the biggest bank the is it Jamie Diamond? Is that his name? I'm bad with I don't the name. Even know who that is? Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. I have no idea who that is. Uh, uh, you, um, you know who he is. Yeah, I know you. You know who he is. It, uh, He's the, the CEO. Uh, yeah. CEO. It's not. It's not City. JP Morgan. I think it is. JP Morgan. There you go. Yeah. 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 Or oh, Chase. Somebody. Thank you, Chase. JP. JP Morgan. Mm -hmm. Chase. He he kneeled in front of his in front of bank vaults <laughs> with the Kente. I, I missed that, and I'm glad. Oh no, you got to get that. I'm glad. Uh, I I'm, that. I'm a. I'm gonna but send it to you. You, you got to say yeah. something. You got to post it for your whole audience, so folks have yeah. some, some clarity. We'll get, we'll get the performative, but as soon as we're out in the streets, wait a minute. As soon as we're out in the streets for too long, order, order, order. we're out in the streets for too long, we get cop city. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's the yeah, real. That solution. was the response. Yeah, that was the the the, the, the cop city movement because that's effectively what they're doing. What they got now, uh, uh, Memphis, one in the Bay, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, they sprouting these all up as a, as a whole strategy. Yep. Uh, uh, which is Militarized in direct response. Spaces near yeah, you. which is a direct response to, to, to the summer of 2020, to mm -hmm. the George Floyd Rebellion. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the real uh, thing we get. That's the substantive thing that happens. Capital cools exactly. its money. But you can be a police guard. But you can please if you, you want. Can be a police guard. Don't don't be mad. We can get you a job. Kali's smiling and chuck chuckling now. He <laughs> wasn't smiling at the beginning, boy. I, I said that earlier. Too, the number one thing, the number one, the number one job opening for black folks is security. Well, security. That's yeah, not a you job. can get That's yeah, you job. get security jobs all day long to guard their property. You can and you can get cop jobs now all day long if you want. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to talk about the job job. But the security job, we need to get some training and bring that back to the hood. Well, that's, that's not bringing it back to the hood. What we mean by that and what they mean by that is two different things. I know. Different I know. With a, it's two with a, different, with different I know. Word. I know. I know. So, and far be it, don't, please, don't nobody run up out of here talking about Tanya need to be, Tanya said we need to be in the police department and bring them, that is not what I said. Please don't do that. Do not do that. Well, you know that's how they distort things on us sometimes uh, uh, and, and try to flip it. Like so, Tommy, let, so let like me ask film, you a question. Like this film and the J through Kush plan and the whole yeah. Republic of Africa independence movement. Yes, sir. So, so let me ask you a question. Like we we we've I think done a decent job in being <laughs> civil on 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 this and just try to point it out. Mm -hmm. But I th I think we need to come back and do, uh, uh, and I'm inviting you, I think we need to come back or there needs to be a series. 
mm -hmm. uh, about the new African independence movement. Absolutely. About its history. Absolutely. Right? Uh, and, and, and if it's a couple of hundred people, hey, that's more than 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 uh, uh, we've been reaching. Let's be real on a history. certain level. And, and we start from where we, where we can start. History and current reality, that's which right. is the other thing that I have been pushing you for. And you pat me on my head and say, oh, nice, Tandy. And then you ignore me. No, I don't. I, yes, I, do. I don't have. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Look, I'm gonna be real. No, I'm, I'm gonna come to you I, next. You know, I, I haven't. I haven't been. Uh, I haven't been writing as much uh, as I used to. Not because I don't want to, uh, but just being in a in a in an awkward situation where I'm not able often to to uh, uh, share my own thoughts without all those thoughts being attributed to uh, Cooperation Jackson. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I've been trying in the context of the, the, the nature of the struggle that we've been in, you know, internal with, within uh, 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 Jackson, you know, uh, uh, been trying to both share, I think, the lessons uh, that I think should be learned from our struggle. And I think there's plenty here mm -hmm. uh, in a way that that folks will listen to them, you know, because the one the first piece I put out. Uh, uh, what was it the casting uh, uh, shadows, mm -hmm. uh, casting light? I can't one of them damn things. But um, many years ago, uh, uh, folks took it as an attack rather than an analysis. But we need to analyze. You know, uh, how do we wind up? As like Kamal said, how do we wind up kind of perpetuating all of the the different dynamics of all the black administrations that came before us and Cleveland, Detroit, Los mm -hmm. Angeles. You know, how do we wind up doing that? Given given where we come from and where our movements come from, what our politics was and our ideology, we got to study that, you know, and and uh, uh, and and be able to to uh take the good with the bad, the the difficult with the sweet. <clears throat> uh, uh so folks uh uh understand it to a, to a certain extent as objectively as possible. You know, and that's that's just been hard to do because some some aspects of it, you know, because of, you know the, we talking about family and friends and uh, uh, folks who've been around, you know, it, it feels like airing dirty laundry to a certain extent. So trying to figure out, like, no, I'm not interested in airing no dirty laundry. I'm not interested in tearing nobody I'm down. I'm interested in cleaning in the, laundry. How about that? And, huh? I'm interested in cleaning laundry. How about that? Well, hey, that's a good that's a good way. I'll I'll use that uh, uh yeah, analogy. How am I supposed to get real hold you? Hold you. He's like this tall. I don't know. Let me get back with you in a minute. Hold on, hold that thought. Let, let's take. Yeah, this is a I'm commitment. gonna have to run. I know I came late. Hold on, I come on. Hold I'm on. gonna have to run. Y'all see, I'm, I'm gonna have to run too. But so but, look, but I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take go. you up on that. Before y'all go, hold on. Rob uh -huh. is about to get banned from Black Power Media. Don't you run up out of here talking that madness? Okay, look. Everybody got to go. I understand that. But you put something out there. Um, I started to call you. Come out. You put something out there, Kali, and I want to challenge you on it. Let's talk about yeah. that. Let's talk about not, but not just the history, the current reality. And Kamal, you know you're welcome yeah. to threaten and, and jump on and back in. Understood. Understood. Most definitely. I'm, 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 I'm just about to say, Tony, to, to accept the challenge, and it's easy for me to talk and, and structure at this point in time. And, the right no, on the real. I mean, you see why? I, you know, I got uh, yeah. uh, trying to run Children. too many things. You got to children, to right? a, a good father, which is a challenge, uh, at least in the way I wanted to do to be done. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I think we we should do that. Uh, and let's set a time. I would say realistically in in, in January. And come out, you're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get you in trouble. You're gonna have to join me mm -hmm. uh, because you know. Uh, 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 Kamal plays a critical role in that history, and, and there's a way in which you know there's been some efforts to erase both of us, but I think probably him more than me from from some of the from of the history uh, 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 around how some of this has been constructed and and, and uh, laid bare, and so we need to uh, uh, you know do that. Uh, but I will end and say this, you know, uh, I like Kamal. Uh, you know, the the this is still the fundamental way forward and the way I see that we play a contributing role in dismantling the U.S. empire. And that is by, you know, building the new African independence movement to, to, to free the land, 
without contradiction. Mm -hmm. Right, and in the fullest sense of what that means. So uh, that is what I would like to be able to to present and share, and some programmatic things that I think uh, Cooperation Jackson and CMB are doing and doing right. Not that we are perfect. Not that we are hitting on all cylinders or accomplishing all our goals, but mm -hmm. I think we got a little something, you know, that that we can hang our hat on that we want to share with other folks to adopt in wherever you may be, and pick it up and so we can figure out two or three or five years how we can federate on the basis of a combined and shared program, uh, build a, a real, you know, quote unquote alternative if not just a, our own internal way of relating and sharing value and doing productive work that gives us enough of a, of an advantage to be able to engage on a, on a sustained struggle more on our terms than not. So this mm -hmm. is a piece I'd love to, to come back and share. I'm definitely down to be a part of that. Definitely. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, and y'all know I'm going to hold y'all to it. Kali, before you go, what's your new book? Jackson Rising Redux, uh, which we we doing a little book tour, me and Saki, um, starting uh, tomorrow, actually, uh, uh, up in me? California. So mm -hmm. we're doing Northern California, then trying to do Southern California, probably in the spring, and then hit the East Coast. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can get it at PM Press or, um, you know, try to buy it through PM right. or, or a local bookstore. Don't, don't right. do it on Amazon. Ask a uh, local uh, bookstore to stock it, right? Right. Just like my book, some of us are brave. You can get it at derajapress.com or ask your local bookstore to stock it first. Come on, we know we already know what you're doing. You out there trying to stop Cop City with your comrades, and we appreciate that. Appreciate you taking time away from that work to join us here and looking forward to both of y'all or individually coming back and let's doing this work on the Black Power Media platform. Will do. All right. So I think that's it for now. Uh, Kamal just got up out of here. Kali, my love and uh, respect to the fam. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'll see you when you come this way for the book tour. But if not, I'll see you virtually. You will. And, and I, I'm going to make a stop by uh, L.A. in, in uh, uh, sooner rather than later in January is what the plan is. So we'll connect. OK, cool, cool, cool. Yep. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate and appreciate all of y'all, the BP Emmers, for hanging out in the chat. Uh, we didn't get to any questions for the folk. Just letting them run with it, letting it rip. So maybe next time. Next time, maybe what we'll do is we'll they threaten. They said they they said that they were serious about it. All right. Let's do this as a study group, a virtual study group, a black power media study group on these questions and all the questions you want to ask of them, of Kamal, of Kali, and anybody else we bring through, it'll be dealt with then. So again, appreciate y'all for hanging out. Like, subscribe, share, like, subscribe, share, like, subscribe, share, both here on Black Power Media and the Root Work channel on YouTube. Thank you oh so much. Appreciate y'all. Y'all stay safe and I'm out. Peace. Thank you.